I, like many rationally minded people, subscribe to many video game based conspiracies. Like that Kirby is and always has been intended to represent European imperialism and the concept of Manifest Destiny. Or like how Samus and her exploits actually mirror American xenophobia. And of all the things I've come to believe over the years, never once have I thought that having less games is better. I mean, come on! Now you guys know how much I love me some definitions, which is why I was both elated and annoyed that I get to talk about indie fatigue. Now this is a brand new concept that has popped up in my Twitter timelines as of yesterday. You see, uh, Nintendo dropped an indie spotlight yesterday, and uh, yeah, I don't have a lot to say about it. I mean, it was fine. Uh, at 15 unremarkably short minutes, it didn't really have time to blow anyone away. So yeah, it was it was just fine. However, I do think that Untitled Goose Game saved it for me. This game, this is one. I, I mean, just look, look at it. So you might be asking, what does Indie Fatigue have to do with this? On top of that, Delonco, what is Indie Fatigue? Well, from what I've gathered, Indie Fatigue is the jaded feelings associated with the advertisement and promotion of independently developed games in place of AAA ones. This means that when a console holder goes out of their way to promote games made by a smaller, lesser known company, people can tend to get a little bit pissed, to say the least. Now, I can't help but feel a bit conflicted on this matter. I don't like to entertain the idea that consumers should be allowed to be so spoiled uh, that they start telling companies how to handle promotion. But I also understand what obvious padding is, and I could see a bit of both going on after the showcase. You see, the Switch launched last year and has been very successful ever since. And this is good. Every month we saw a major release hit the shelves and chart rather well. Recently though, this hasn't always been the case. This year has been termed the year of the B-Squad, and it has been no lighter on games as far as quantity goes. However, I do believe that the quality is subjective. I, for one, adore indie games. I've often held that a good budget does not make for a good game. I mean, how could it? So let's be real though. Thematically, we've seen a lot of repetition in the indie space. I've seen a lot of indie games that, for the life of me, from a strictly appearance standpoint, look exactly the same. The 8 and 16 bit look have been getting pretty exhausting to me. Personally, just for like some time now. This doesn't mean I won't pick one up. In fact, I bought Wizard of Legend twice. It just means that I'm a bit less likely to give one a closer look if it has one of those art styles. And this just speaks to nuance. With games like A Hat in Time, Hollow Knight, and Hellboy coming out of indie studios, I think they're starting to be a new standard for graphical quality. Now, don't get me wrong, I just simply request variety. I don't think they all have to look the same. Now, there is another side to this that isn't talked about much, and it's about biting the hand that fed you. Now, Sony has been accused of a lot of things, one of which is ignoring and purposefully snubbing indie developers. Now, this doesn't mean that they won't allow games on their platform. No, this just means that they don't promote them very well, if at all. At least anymore. And this is where I start to understand what Nintendo is doing. At the beginning of the PS4's lifetime, the games just weren't all there. Duh. With a new console, they're oftentimes going to be droughts, so to speak. So in order to have games for consumers to buy in between house releases, you have to have indies and middleware. And this makes sense. I just hope that Nintendo doesn't go the same way as Sony did uh, once they're able to secure third-party content on a regular basis. Once again, I just I don't dislike indie games. I want to see them succeed. I love seeing an indie dev get so popular that major publishers take notice. It means that the creativity behind the beloved product can now have the funds to broaden the scope of their next offering. And this is a beautiful cycle. Not to mention, companies like Nintendo make stupid money when these games sell well, so it makes sense to promote them anyway. We've noticed the Switch versions of indie games doing very well when compared to their releases on other platforms. So this could mean that the Nintendo Switch audience is more receptive to these types of games, or they feel the need to justify their purchase. However, I do feel it is more the former than the latter. When you only play AAA games, you miss out on some of the richest, most heartfelt stories. Um, some of the best stories I've ever experienced have come from indie games. Some of the most entertaining gameplay and novel experiences I've ever experienced have come from indie games. So the fatigue thing, well, to be honest, I don't see Nintendo stopping this sort of promotion anytime soon. But I do believe that we're coming into another year of AAA Nintendo content. Like, I'm talking A game stuff. But with games like Bayonetta and Metroid and possible Pokemon, 
um, and possibly Animal Crossing for next year, I think that we'll be having a great time with our hybrid consoles. Couple that with amazing indie titles in between and some dope third party games, and we've got more and more reason to be excited. So please, play indies, be happy, and stay perfect.